Oh boy, what a mess it was last week. I was actually in the Eden Center and they locked, they closed it down. And I thought something happened inside for security reasons. I didn't know what was going on. I just came from the washroom, went up, found out the lower level was closed, the upper level was closed. So we had to walk all the way around. And when I got to about the bus stop over there, I noticed a black block coming up. And for the first time, some of the extreme anti-G20 people started to show up, including the black block an all-black attired anarchist movement that uses sabotage to smash the state and corporations. They covered their faces and shrouded behind banners as to block their identities from being seen. Their presence alone created tension amongst all of us and raised the bar for potential vandalism and chaos. We right now are at Spadina and Queen, main intersection of Toronto, and it's just being taken over, sworn by some really radical anarchist activists right now. I've never seen Toronto like this before, so this is definitely a first for all of us here. So I think something's gonna be happening soon because I'm seeing a lot more people covering their faces, a lot more of the black blocks, covered head to toe in black. Um, everyone seems to be getting ready for something. The more radicals are kind of clustering over here. We just saw a smoke canister going off, kind of covering the Toronto sky with this big red flame. Toronto was getting ready for a war. No cops anywhere, no, no security guards, nowhere. And um, the thing was, they, 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 I'm not sure if you can zoom in over uh, under the Adidas store there, the storefront, they put the mailbox right through the window and damaged various storefronts up till about uh, college when it made a left turn. You see, and I actually spoke with one of the protesters there, they go, they're actually protesting for all the sweatshops that the G20 are a member of. The problem is, creating violence does not solve your situation. Because the thing is, see, if, you, if they incorporated what Martin Luther King did in the 60s by boycotting, see, boycotting get where the money is. Putting, uh, putting a mailbox to a storefront window isn't going to help your cause, because you're only perpetuating the violence. You see, you have to have something that's moral, legal, ethical. You know, see, I don't cover my face like the black uh, black block do. You can see my face. I have nothing to hide. I'm not a pussy to hide behind a bandana, a hat, or anything else. No. You see, you see who I am. I'm not like them. They work for the police. What is your opinion on the idea of undercover police officers being used as agent provocateurs to start the violence? <laughs> Rebecca? Um, Montebello, 2007. <laughs> This is not a conspiracy theory. Like, what were the cops doing? I know one of the things that was confusing was a lot of people got arrested that were just walking. But the reason that they got arrested is because they had been identified mm -hmm. for a criminal offense. A lot of people seeing that will go, oh, what are we arresting them for? They haven't done anything. It's, I'm sure we have to justify all our arrests, and I'm sure that's probably what happened. On the Saturday when uh, there was a rampage by the Black Bloc uh, on the more violent protesters, they were kind of tearing through the city. I noticed several times the police were kind of just standing off and just standing there and they weren't kind of intervening. Why was that? If it's property damage, that's one thing. But if they see a citizen that's in trouble or an assault, yeah, they're going to they're gonna, you know, leave their post to deal with something like that. Public safety is, is paramount. As we all walk out tonight, we're walking out into a democracy. The fact that we live and then have this culture is the fact that we can... Does, is it getting better? Is it getting better every day? Are you making progress? You're certainly not helping. Maybe not, but... Are... You can take to the streets! You can be part of the struggle! I knew that the G20s have a history of getting out of hand, but I figured Canadians were more peaceful than that. Yet despite our peaceful reputation, my home city of Toronto was being turned into a fortress with fences and police on every block. We've seen it play out since the summit time and time again. Saturday destruction, Sunday mass arrests, uh, underaction equals overreaction. It's a complete attempt to ignore the entire political context that happened going into the G20. It's a complete attempt to ignore the political history leading up to it. You currently have 16 people who are on trial that were arrested in house raids before the summit took place. Why? For basically conspiring. Basically, the conspiracy trial is, is conspiring to organize people to walk down Young Street. See, if they took a page on Martin Luther King's book, they would know nonviolence is the best way to do it, because uh, like the Tamil Tigers, they blocked off University Avenue. They were considered terrorists because they blocked off the um, Don Valley Parkway, whichever uh, highway it was, back uh, about this time last year. 
they're considered terrorists because they terrorize the city. Same thing with the Black Bloc. See, if they were smart, if they boycotted the products, get them where the money is, because it's a capitalistic society, get them where the money is. Because when you do that, then you, uh, then they start scrambling. Because when you get them in the pocketbook, that's when they feel it. Putting a hole through a window isn't going to solve it. They can just repair that the next day. But you get them where the money is, that's where I think. That's where Martin Luther King was smart. Nonviolence. That's not a way to do it. See, the Black Bloc are pussies. I'm going to say that right now. They're pussies. Okay? I'm showing my face. If you're doing something that's legal and ethical, why don't you show your face? There are some voices missing from our panel. We reached out to the Peel and Toronto Police and both declined to join us here tonight. Mayor Miller's office directed us to the Harper government, who didn't get back to us. 900 were arrested in all. It became the biggest mass arresting in Canadian history. I went down to the temporary detention centre, a film studio, to see my friends who had been arrested. They're basically hitting my skull with their boots and they're telling me stop resisting, stop resisting. When I was not even resisting, I was lying still. And some had stories that scared me. I stole my camera. I stole my $6,000 camera. My name's Adam McIsaac. I stopped my bike because police were illegally searching people. I produced my media pass. They said this isn't real. They took it. I was told to back up for the safety of the police. Uh, I backed up, I complied, and then I was thrown down, kicked. Elbows, they tasered, they tasered me right here in the groin. And then when I asked them, did you taser me? They denied it. They just assumed that I was an anarchist. $1.3 billion for what? To beat the shit out of people that produce media? There's now outrage pouring over the police tactics and the abuse of human rights. Protests on Queen's Park at Queen's Park. I think that this was a situation where there were legitimate terror threats that came up. That's, that's absurd. That's actually, it's actually an accurate Hey, sir. Calm down, folks. The one woman who went uh, and testified that she was threatened with rape, and this only got into the, uh, the newspaper 24. So she went public and said she was detained and threatened by police officers with rape. Yep. Also, we have another article here. There was a whistleblower from the Toronto Police that went public. Um, he went to uh, the reporter Joe Warmington of the Toronto Sun. And basically he said that they were giving an order to stand down, to not arrest these violent criminals, which, which were these black bloc, I'd say 100, 150 still criminals. But meanwhile, there's 16,000 police officers just standing back, oh, yeah. getting an order from the highest ranks. So this is a criminal intent right here. We know that in the past, in Quebec, in Montebello, they were caught as agent provocateurs oh, yeah. infiltrating these groups. So let's talk about the facts here. Let's talk about they were to told to stand down. Oh, yeah. That's how they got the Eden Center closed down, under lockdown, yeah. yet that all the black, or most of them, I'm not sure how many there were, are quite a few of them coming up here with no police presence. You know, I mean, come on. I mean, it, it just, the facts are just overwhelming. Let's talk about the censorship of the news. We have a Globe and Mail article that came out in the morning, and the original title of the article was Police Admit Deliberately Misleading Public on Expanded Security Law. So basically, they admitted lying to the public, okay? And then later on that evening, it was censored, okay? The article was re-engineered. It said police admit no five meter rule existed on security fence law. So basically they admit that the, that the act of the, um, of the Public Works Act was, was passed in private. This was a secret um, act that was passed. The public was not notified, so they misled the public. We gotta talk about that. And we think we live in a democracy? Yeah. What gives them the right to make these decisions? Because it's the US and Canada, that gives them the right, and Europe, and the other colonial countries of the world, is that the reason that they're allowed to make these decisions? Yeah. Well, I think it's been said repeatedly tonight, they represent 80% of the wealth and power. Who else can make, but, but who, else can, who else can use wealth and power but the wealthy and powerful? Well, this is, all right, guys, we're running out of time a little bit, so. It's the, the obvious question. Look at that. So that's the store right in there, hanging out. They're loitering. Look right across. I mean, this is just a couple hundred yards. And Don, let me draw the attention back across the street here. Here they are. I mean, that's what uh, several dozen police officers. But this is what they've done all evening, Ken. They have waited to make sure they have a huge show of force. And then they've marched slowly down the street. It, it appears to be the case that their strategy is not to get into a confrontation with anybody, to simply try and scare them down the street, try and push them away so that there's not another police on 
civilian yeah, I, violent activity. I get it. I just don't understand the tactic. I'm not a police officer. I, I, what I do understand is somebody's private property is being violated right there, yeah. and the police are 100 yards away looking at it. I, I don't get it. Anyway, Ken, Joe Vasquez. I, I do want to reiterate one thing, Ken. Last January, we saw widespread damage, but this time, no, it's not the case. A lot of places escaped the kind of damage. All right, that's good.